Hello, and welcome to Silicon Valley Girls Chat Over Tea. I'm Gloria. And I'm Rosetta. And thank you, everyone, for coming in and watching us this week on our chat. We love it. And as usual, we're going to start with our teas. So what tea are we drinking today? And I'm drinking, I'm going to show you, it's a big packet here. Woohoo! But it's called Dandy Blend. And I That's have a told, big I, bag. <laughs> it is. It's a bulk bag. I got it from Amazon. And it is Dandelion. Dandelion <laughs> tea. And this is my substitute for, instead of coffee, I drink this. Nice. It is, uh, the ingredients are, let me see where the ingredients are. It says, all the goodness of dandelion in an instant. So it's extracts of roasted dandelion, oh, sorry, extracts of roasted barley, rye, chicory root, dandelion root, and sugar beet. And uh, what you do is you just, it's a powder, instant powder. So you put as much as you want, not too much, because then it goes a bit bitter. And then you mix it with water and you can put, you can make it like coffee. You can put like whatever if you want milk or a nut milk and some sugar or whatever you have, but it's an instant herbal beverage uh, with dandelion in it. It's caffeine free, no acidity and no bitterness. So that's what it is, Dandy Blend. If anybody wants to try that, it's amazing. It's a good substitute instead of coffee and I've had it seeping. You can make it hot or cold, which I like. So there it is in my 49. Oh, look at us matching. I got 49er behind me. You got your 49er glass. Yes, That's just so thank so you. And then let me know or let the audience know, Gloria, what you are drinking this week. I am drinking orange spice black tea. Nice. Yes. The ingredients are black tea, orange peel, cinnamon, natural flavor of clove and orange. Nice. And nice. Yes, it's very, very nice. And like you said, you can drink it hot or cold. So I'm seeping it so it'll get the rich flavor. Cheers. Yeah. And then I'm going to do like you and put it over ice. Yes, because it's really, really hot. We're in Northern California, and it's like yes. that, so. we're having a heat wave. It's a heat wave for a few days. I'm just going to see real quick on my phone what the temperature is. Well, I'm in Campbell, and it's meant to get to 98 degrees today, and it says right now it's 93. Yes. So it's hot and, inside. Yes, and it's 90 here, and I'm in Fremont, and normally we have winds that come off the bay, and it cools it right down. There's no wind. And I don't have air conditioning because it's normally only hot a few weeks out of the whole year. However, if this keeps up, mama's going to have to get some air con. That's all I got to say. Yes, you do. Yes, <laughs> you do. <laughs> so as we always kick it off, Ellen tells us to be kind to one another. And one of the things that um, Ellen is pretty vocal about a lot of things. And the recent events of George Floyd's murder has caused unrest initially across the United States and now it's across the world. So what Ellen would normally do is she would talk and she has shared with us all, she just doesn't have the words right now. And so um, Rosetta just found this really wonderful post and um, She's going to put it on her Instagram. I'm going to put it on my Instagram. And it's just having a person ask you questions because it's just bringing consciousness to the have and the have nots and making us all aware of what's going on. So I stand with George Floyd's family. I know that his life was taken way too soon. And we all, everyone got to see a person murdered on the streets for potentially, we've been told, attempting to pass a $20, uh, a fake $20 bill forgery. And I don't know about you, Rosetta, every time I go into Sprouts, they have a, a little machine. And if you give them a $50 bill or a $100 bill, they put it through the machine so that it'll say it's a valid bill or it's not. Right. Initially, uh, at Sprouts, if the bill would come out, they would just go, uh, it's fake. 
the machine is not really good. So they feed it in, it says no, they feed it back in and it says it's yes. So for a person to lose their life behind a potential forgery, it's just really sad, really sad. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's very sad. And everybody knows we don't have to talk about the circumstances and the details that went around how he eventually passed away. It's, it's just really, really sad. And Gloria is going to talk more about, you know, we don't really want to go on too, too detailed in regards to this because you've been seeing it probably all over the news. But we do want to highlight this because it is important. And Gloria is going to talk about some other things that she wants to discuss in regards to this. Yes. So I don't know if a lot of you remember this or not, but back in 2015, Oprah Winfrey had gone on vacation. She took her hairstylist, her makeup artist, her best friend, Gail, and Gail's daughter. And they went shopping and they went to a uh, Louis Vuitton store. And, you know, you can't tell a person just by them walking on the streets. So the salesperson, uh, Oprah said, I'd like to see that bag. And he was like, no, 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 can show, no, no, no. And Oprah's like, no, really, I, I want to see that bag because she asked um, Gail's daughter, she told her, you can have any, anything in the shop. And, you know, she's, you know, cause me, I'd be going, girlfriend, let's go shopping. Any bag in the store? Oh my God. So um, Gail's daughter was really, you know, she was very, very conservative. And she goes, I'd like that little bag there. Long story short, they went back and forth, back and forth. It got to the point where Oprah had to ask to speak to the manager. So the manager was also like, eh, no, 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 no. The, the salesperson said to Oprah, you need to go back to the United States and go to a store and buy your bag there. You cannot buy a bag here the guy that was taking him on the tour was outside. So they went outside, they told him what was going on. He came inside and he explained to them, that is Oprah Winfrey. Do you know who you are refusing to sell merchandise to? Long story short, they come back and they said, you can have any bag in the place you want. And as a matter of fact, champagne for everyone. <laughs> The thing is, you think that this is evolving and it's going to go away and it just keeps coming back around. And that I think is why the unrest in the streets is so prevalent because we've tried before. We've all tried before to live and love and be, and it just, it'll be good for a little bit and then something will happen. And then it's like, okay, let's go back to the sixties. And the young people are not going to go back to the sixties. Rosetta also shared with me an incident that she had when she worked in retail. Yes, I want to talk about the incident I had. I was at a retail store. I was working. I'm not going to name the retail store. I was an assistant manager, store manager in the late 90s. And two African-American -American ladies had walked in. I didn't even notice this. The only time I noticed this was when the store manager came to me and whispered, keep an eye on those two black ladies that just walked into the store and me I'm not I don't stereotype I'm not a racist I just went in my head whatever but <laughs> yes I just went whatever whatever <laughs> I really didn't really keep an eye on them because why what is the reason for doing that there's no reason they're just normal people coming into the store and yes um, it just really showed me that how that was what really sparked my concern over that store manager. I mean, for her to come to me and whisper that. And since then, I have not. Well, that was a long time ago in the late 90s. I never really got along with her because she people that do that. I don't know. For me, it changes my mind on them. Yeah. And I, and she wasn't that nice to me anyway, to begin with, but because she did that, I eventually left working at that particular store. So that's one incident that I had. Yeah. Yeah. So Rosetta and I would like you all to please just open your hearts. Just, just every day surround your lives with love. And as you go out, I want you to think to yourself, how many 
people of color do I know? How many black people have I ever had in my home? Do my children know that I love all people irregardless of skin tone? And if you come up with, mm, I don't know, no, no, then broaden your spectrum because we're some wonderful, wonderful people. And given the opportunity, we promise you will have a lovely time with us all. You will have hilarious times with, with people. Yes, you will. And I always <laughs> say to Gloria, and I've said this in many of our chats before, it stems from within the home, within our home, parents. We need to educate, give our kids the knowledge that we need to love everyone. It doesn't matter what race. The only thing that people need to know is that a normal human being should be decent and human. Right? It doesn't matter what yes. race. So please, yes. parents, teach your kids right from wrong, not about the color or the nationality of the person. Yes. You know, we had the pleasure of watching a little boy. His name is Kobe Wyan, and he's a year old, and his mom said he liked to help her in the kitchen. So one day, they just decided to film it, and then they posted it. This baby has 1.5 million Instagram followers. He has people like Jennifer Aniston, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Gordon Ramsay, etc. So let's, what I, the reason I'm bringing him up is I want you to see the joy that this baby has. This baby has no idea of color or anything like that. And I want all parents to hear me. This is a taught this is the taught situation. When you come into the world, you can go to any hospital with babies. They don't care what color you are. They want you to pick them up and rock them and sing to them. They just, they're looking for love. So let's all look at little Kobe and the love that he's bringing and the joy. And we'll put the link down below so you can check it out because he is such a cutie pie. He's such a cutie so pie. cute. And I can't believe he has so many million followers. He's amazing. I mean, yeah. 1.5. One we million. would be happy with 1.5 thousand, you know? We, <laughs> <laughs> we want to find out, well, what does it take to get the followers? Because we want some too. Yes, but if you ever want to have a nice smile on your face, check yeah. him out. We're going to put yeah. the link below. We'll have the link below so you can find, find him quite easily and check him out yourself. So why don't you give us a little quick update on labor of love? Oh, Labor of Love. As you all know, there's a new program called Labor of Love, and there's been only two, two episodes so far. So last week, we did a recap of the first episode, and it comes on every Thursday, so I'll do a recap of the episode two. So just a quick recap of what it's about. It's about a lady, and she's 41 years old, and she's at a time in her life where she really wants to have children. So the men that are brought on the show are also hopefully in their time of lives where they're ready to have children. So this lady, um, her name is, I don't want to say it wrong. Kristen, is her name Kristen? Yes, it's Kristen. And it's she's Kristen. 41. It is Kristen. I just want to make sure. I don't know why in my mind I have Kirsten. I don't know. It's not. Yeah, it's Kristen. I, I, I should know. Yeah, I'm she's 41. But, yeah, so... So Kristen is 41 and she's looking, she has been married before, but divorced and now it's her time. And she said she wants to have a child within the year. So they bring on all these men and hopefully these men are ready to have children. And last season, sorry, last episode, I keep wanting to say season, but last episode, she, every episode they do some kind of um, like, it's not really a game. It's some kind of experiment with the guys and the last episode, they did an experiment on how well will these men protect this lady if a situation arose. So what they did was they brought them into the camping world and they say, this is going to be where you're going to be for the night. And they, the guy that was there was telling these gentlemen that this neck of the woods, there's you know, these animals, and one of the animals that is prevalent is a black bear. Right. So how would you cope if there was a black bear? What are the things you need to do in order to protect yourself and not get in harm's way? So they were saying you need to stand up tall and get up and say, gar, gar, get, get, like this. Right. And then you need to get down on your, 
on your knees and you need to crouch down and just stay still so that the the bear can just come around and sniff around and get used to you so right. basically you want to protect yourself and the people that are around you so they did this little experiment where they wanted to see if there was a black bear obviously the black bear they planted is just a person in costume they wanted to see how much protection the guys would have and how much and if they would protect the lady Kristen so cool so that was that experiment and she got to see who would really protect her and she had two dates that the same episode and one was with Matthew he is a wrestler and the other one is with Marcus Matthew brought her to a um what was it that they did it was it was a cabin right they had dinner at a cabin and then outside they had fireworks and she she told him that she was she brought up this story that she was um at the boston marathon when it when the right. bomb went when the bomb went off the time during the time where they had the um boston marathon so that was something that she's been trying to get over and then obviously at the end of the date they they kissed and she told him that she really likes him marcus they went to a baseball game right was it a baseball game basketball basketball, basketball. Game. They, went to, they went to a basketball game and they yeah, were they were like in one of the owner suites the high end oh that's suite. right yes yes they were the owner suites and then they went to uh they they enjoyed themselves together and all of a sudden you see them on the jumbotron the, the kiss cam but because marcus is not one to be like on the spur of the moment i don't know they didn't show it i don't think he kissed her right even though he was he on the kissed her like on the side of the face because she put her hands over her face like oh, oh my god because she she doesn't know this man she wasn't gonna you know lip lock so he kissed her and held her in his arm kind of thing okay because i didn't know because he did they did do a screenshot and he said i'm not one to be put on the spot right and to just kiss just because the kiss cam is up so that's what he did but anyway, to cut a long story short, she had two dates and she kept Matthew, which he's the one that's the wrestler. So I really like, I really like him. He's nice. Yeah. He seems genuine and sincere. So um, she actually got rid of two men. I forget the names of these two men, but she got rid of two men and now she's dwindling it down. There's only like 10 men left or something. Eight okay. men, 10 men left. So that's... Uh, that's a recap of Labor of Love. If you want to watch it, it's every Thursday night. There you have it. That's my little little synopsis re pre uh, review of this show. Yes, well, you know, everything is so heavy. We have to find little light things to talk about. Yep. So Saturday, um, my husband has watched probably every show that's on television and his favorite uh show is equalizer 2 he watches that movie so much he can narrate it and so he's watching it and i go oh my god i can't watch it again i love denzel i love him i just can't watch this movie again so i take the, the remote control and i start searching and i see supersize me too now in 2012 was it 2012 no it was 2000 2007 a guy did a movie called supersize me in which he ate only mcdonald's for 30 days to see he was a healthy guy and he wanted to see well what happens if a healthy guy eats fast food you know what's the worst thing that could happen well he got really 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 sick you know so he did this movie and then apparently in 2019 they did a new one and i didn't know anything about it so the premise of this movie is he wants to figure out why we are still eating crappy food and if he was to create good, high quality food, what would that look like? So he takes us from the process of, I'm gonna make a chicken sandwich. And I want it to be the best chicken sandwich. I want it to be as pure and as natural and organic as I can find. <laughs> that was what he thought, that's what he wanted. However, that's just not the way life is. So he found out that it would be very difficult to do that. So he says, I still want to do it. I want to raise my own chickens. I want to make sure that they're cage free, range free. I want to um, make sure that when I 
produce my sandwiches is the best. Well, he came up against something that's called big chicken. Just so you know, people, there are five major chicken producers. Tyson Foods, Pilgrim's Pride, Sanderson's Farm, Koch Foods, and Purdue Farms. They rule, they control, they determine how the chickens are given to the farmers. If for some reason they don't like the way a farmer performs, one of the farmers rented him one of his barns so that he could grow his own chickens. And the big five found out about him and they have blackballed him. That is taking food out of him and his family's mouth. He has been doing this for generations and now his son is looking to do the same business. And his son is like, I don't, I don't know if I wanna do this anymore because he sees the stress of what his father is going through. It is really sad. So I had Rosetta watch it also because I'm just, I'm like, we're going to put the link down below. We want everybody to watch it because we all need to know what's going on with the food industry because when, now that we're sheltered at home, we're learning more and more than we ever wanted to know about how foods are made available in the United States. Yes, and I didn't know anything about Super Size 2, so when I went to watch it, it's a huge eye opener in the ch raising chickens and the chicken industry. So hi, I really highly, highly suggest you watch it. And I actually watched it with my husband and my son. My son is 16 year old. And after watching it, I'm really glad I had him watch it because he, it's knowledge is power and yes. understanding what these big uh, chicken the five large chicken companies go through and the big chicken council company does. So just to see what it's about and uh, the background the history, because we don't know anything more than what we see in the supermarkets, the package, right. the package chickens and what we see, and it really goes into the real truths. So watch it, everyone. We don't want to go into detail into everything, but it is an educational eye opener. Thank yes. you for pointing that out to me because I did not know there was a super size shoe. Yeah, his restaurant is called Holy Chicken and he created a, fry, uh, excuse me, fried is a bad word, F is a bad word. So it's a crispy grilled chicken sandwich. Yes. So we want you to watch it and then comment below and let us know what you thought because it is, it's provoking. I guarantee you, if you watch it, you will not forget that movie, I promise. Yes. And when I watched it, it really reminded me of Michael Moore, the man that yes. does all the other movies and wants to highlight different issues and situations. Yes, completely. So we're gonna do a little bit of the COVID-19 update. As we all know, with the protesters being out on the streets, there, people are so upset and um, unrest about what's going on that they're forgetting that we have a pandemic. They're forgetting all about coronavirus, COVID-19. They're not wearing their masks, not staying six feet apart. So, you know, we just want you all to please, we understand, we trust me, Rosetta and I, we feel you. We know what you're going through. Just be safe. We want you to really, really be safe. I know that, um, people are opening up, different states are opening up to different degrees. The scary part is that they are going from nothing to, you can now um, uh, have people come inside the building. You can now uh, go to the barbershop. You can now go to a beauty salon. You can now uh, go back inside of malls. You know, I, I would have felt more comfortable if they had said, you know, for the first five days, we're going to do this. And then five days, we're going to do this. And then five days, we're going to do this. Because if anything started to fall out, we would know where it came from. And we could get back to it right away. By them just going out here and just saying, we're just going to open and we're going to do it. It's very, very scary. So well, we Rosetta, don't have in Northern California, we don't have a lot of places just quickly opening back up, right? Right. Going through those phases, unlike yes. other states. However, well, Clara County that. is going to uh, start allowing those phases I was just talking about on Friday. Yes. And they're going to do them all together. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. 
Yes, so I found out that on Friday in downtown San Jose, Morton Steakhouse is opening back up and they actually want you to reserve. I don't know if I'm going to, I doubt I'll be going to visit them. Yeah, it's a, it's a small place. Um, there, it's mostly large booth areas. So it's not like they can have hundreds and thousands of people in there, but it is kind of small. So I'm with Rosetta, I'm, I'm gonna wait and see. And um, she and I were also talking about um, President Trump visited a church in Washington, D.C. Yes, he did. And he was standing in front of that church holding, what was he holding? He was holding a Bible. Bible. And he was not holding it correctly. I thought that was very odd the way he held it. Yep. Yes. So that's... We can go into that in, in a lot of detail, but we just don't want to take up too much time. But I didn't quite understand that. Do you have anything to say, Gloria, real quick about that? Um, well, we, okay, so he went there. He didn't give the people of the church any notice. And what he also did is the Secret Service, um, they cleared the area and it wasn't the most loving and kind way to clear the area. They were um, um, physically, uh, pushing and shoving uh, reporters with credentials, um, just moving them out of the way so that they could secure the place so he could come in and hold up the Bible and take a picture. Um, a lot of feedback to him has been, it would have been better if he had opened the book and read something. People push back on him to say, so what's your favorite uh, verse? What's your favorite passage? And of course he didn't know any or he didn't communicate any. So the people of that spiritual community were mortified of his behavior. And pastors and ministers, uh, bishops, etc., throughout the world are commentating on the result, I think he wanted to show everybody that he was, you know, God fearing, he loves and supports and honors, you know, religion. And the way that they moved everyone out and moved him in, it didn't come across that way. So it wasn't, it just wasn't very good. So the thing that Rosetta and I want everybody to realize is that we are all of one race, the human race. We are all the same. If you were to peel the skin off of us, we look the same. And we have to get to a place where everybody feels and knows we are the same. Yes. And I want to also say that let's hope that when we begin our better normal, we don't forget about this. This is something that has to be continually, we have to be continually improving on the way that we handle this. And don't forget that this is what happened. We don't want it to be where it was just during the pandemic and we go back to the normal and everything is forgotten. We don't want that. We want to keep it top of mind all the time, keep going all the time. And we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We just want everyone to be able to remember that for people of minority and color, it's very hard for them. I mean, as Gloria said, we've never really faced what is freedom what is freedom to us we have to um be very mindful and try and think of it as like gloria said human race not the color of your face that's what i say yes. absolutely and you can even go back in some of our previous chats we've talked about this because i explained to rosetta you know when you have young um, black children, you have to teach them to behave differently. And as old as I am, I do not know what real freedom feels like because I am judged. You know, if I go someplace, uh, I'm always followed around and I'm like, you don't have nothing in here. I won't. And if people follow me, I usually leave the store because I just don't want to spend my money with someone acting like that. So we all have different experiences and I want our new experience to be one of love. Because one thing I do know in my heart, another one of my husband's favorite movies is Independence Day. And one of the reasons that I like Independence Day is because it was all about 
you know, there were all these countries, you know, there was, uh, in one of the scenes, there, there's like the United States, there's Japan, there's China, there's Russia, and there's all of this unrest. When the aliens stepped on the planet, they forgot all about that because it's like, okay, we have to protect the human race. And that's what we want right now. We want everyone to quit worrying about skin tones and protect the human race. We have to figure out what we're going to do about COVID-19. That should be our focus, not trying to kill each other just because I feel I am better than you and I can put my foot or my knee on your neck if I want to and there are no consequences because there are consequences and there will be consequences. Yes. So one thing I wanted to share with you all, I have a friend who lives in Australia. They have had, I want you to hear these numbers, 7,221 cases of COVID-19. Their loss of life is 102. What are we? 100,000. They are 102. And they say the only reason they have the 102 is travelers came to the country from um, other, other parts of the world and off the Ruby Princess cruise ship. Now they have 25,477,825 citizens. So yes, we have way more people. However, look at the ratio of 25 million to 102 loss of life. I think we, the people, should want to know why, what's going on? Why is our loss of life so high? And now we've got all of the unrest and our children are in the streets because they're mortified that the people that they have been raised to love, honor, and respect, they got to see a side of the police department and they just don't understand. They are scared now. They're scared of the people that they always looked up to. So going back to this Australia thing, I just wanted to, I, that's, that's amazing. I mean, I'm wondering, like, I understand it's from the cruise ships because that's what they've, they were very right. scared of the cruise ships docking there, but I'm wondering why the cases have not been higher. I mean, are they exactly. doing more? Yeah, I don't understand that. That's, have they been doing more testings or what is it? Well, what my friend said is from the minute that they heard of this, they locked it down. They started social distancing. They started masks. They started gloves. It was not a discussion. It was a nod of, well, what do you think? Uh-uh. President just came out and said, this is what we're going to do. So they were able to keep it down from the beginning. So uh, what it is, is mm -hmm. quick, decisive action. action. Decisive yes, action. It has to be quick, which, yes, is, not what, which is not what the U.S. did. Yes. Okay. So I thought I would share that with you. And before we leave, um, I have a few, I love doing these questions to you. So okay. I've got a few questions for you. Okay. Yep. So would you prefer not to wear a bra or not to wear bottoms while you're sequestered at home now? Would you prefer? Bottoms meaning pants? Pants. Yeah. You know how a lot of people are getting busted out because they have on a suit up top and they stand oh, up. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. I prefer not to wear a bra, especially okay. for women. Men don't know this, but <laughs> hey, we're women. We don't want to wear a bra. <laughs> yes, girlfriend. I'm with you. Ditto. If you could have a conversation, would you prefer to talk to the Pope or the Dalai Lama? I'd like to talk to the Dalai Lama. Very good. Very good. If you could choose one, would you prefer perfect temperature worldwide forever or world peace? World peace for sure. World yes, peace for yeah. sure. That's a no-brainer. Yes, we're, we're getting it there. If you could spend the day with someone famous, who would you choose? Oh, wow. If I had to, okay. If I, oh my goodness, I have a couple of people. <laughs> Can I choose two people? It has to be one person. Well, okay, two. Okay, my two people would be Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey. Wow, very yes. good. I did not have to think about that. That's why I had to choose two. <laughs> I know. Well, they're both such wonderful, powerful women. And I'm like you, um, I would love to spend time with Michelle Obama. I just, I mean, she is just grace in action to me. I love her. And I would love to hang out with Miss Ellen. 
Oh, Ellen as well. Yes. Yes. But, I mean, the so, list can go on and on. It's just, you know. Well, the and first then, two, because I've always loved Oprah and Michelle Obama, because I just watched her documentary, Becoming yes. on Netflix. But yes, Ellen, you're up there. You're third. I haven't yes. forgotten about you, Ellen. I still <laughs> love you a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. So as we always like to wrap up our talks, we try and start with Ellen, be kind to one another. And of course, today we want to end with Ellen, be kind to one another. And Ellen uh, has been running reruns on her show of late. And one of the things she just did is a little TikTok uh, post in which they're asking Twitch and his wife, Allison, some questions. And it is, it's going to blow your mind. So we're going to figure out how to let you know where that's located. We'll put it down below. Um, we are so grateful that you take the time to spend with us and to allow us to share our input and our feelings and our thoughts with you all. Yeah, we really appreciate you tuning in and just watching us every week. We try and talk about things that are near and dear to us, uh, our likes, our loves, and anything social. So if you have anything you want us to discuss or talk about, don't forget, you can put the feedback below or you can email us. We would love some feedback, wouldn't yes. we? And don't forget to hit the thumbs up, to like our videos, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of our chats. Yes. Thank you again so much for an amazing chat this week and checking us out. And as always, remember to... Mm -hmm. Always. Always keep smiling, everyone. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye. Bye.